Are you a freelancer looking for a better way to manage your workflow? In this video, I'll show you how I use Notion to organize my entire freelance process. From client management to project tracking, Notion brings all your needs together in one place. Join me on this tour and discover how Notion can streamline your workflow and help you stay organized. This is the main and home page you see. On the left hand side, we have a navigation bar section where we can jump into the different pages to manage the respective part of our freelance work. These pages can be reordered based on how you like to organize or prioritize them. On the right column, we have a few database views stacked together. Again, I can easily drag and drop to reorder these database views based on what I frequently visit or prioritize. To add a new database view to this page, we simply copy the link of the database and paste it to create a link view where we want to see them. From there, we can customize the layout and properties we want to see. This means you can have as many of the same database view reflected in different pages and format. Now we'll dive into each of the pages on the sidebar to introduce the different features within this system. We first have a page called Dashboard. The idea for this page is similar to that of the right column where we pull in all the different databases to create a one-page overview of everything. This dashboard page is where you can put together even more database views. An approach could be to filter out important tasks, projects, or clients on the front page and show the remaining tasks, projects, or clients on this dashboard page. At the end of the day, you have the power to customize and put together your unique dashboard for your use case. Moving on, we have the clients page. On this page, we have two database views. Most of the time, I would only need to use the pipeline view to add new clients or view and update the details of each client. There can be wide set of client details we track and this can differ for every freelancer. You have the flexibility to show, hide, delete, or add any properties to align to what you do. A small tip I like to do to remember to follow up with my client is to set a next reminder. On each client page, you can see a few databases here which are projects, tasks, and meetings. These views are filtered to show only those related to this specific client. Every time we create a new client, these database views will auto-populate based on how customized them in the page template. You can too edit the page template to reorder these databases views or customize them further. And then set this page template as the default template to automatically use the template every time. The table database of my clients below this view helps me keeps an archive of everyone I've been in touch with. This allows me to filter or search for anyone when I need to. And that's the client page. Next, we have a simple meetings page to view our upcoming meetings on one side and a calendar view of all our meetings on the other side. Next, we have the projects page. At the top of the page, we can see a Kanban view of our projects. This allows you to have an overview of all your project status and update each project status with drag and drop. Next, we have a timeline view of our projects. It allows you to see a visual representation of your project timeline and identify any potential scheduling conflicts and better manage your time. Again, you can customize the view to hide or show relevant properties. Lastly, we have another Kanban view of our projects by this time group by priorities instead of status. This serves as a reminder to allocate your time and effort more effectively. Going inside a project page, we can see all the properties and details of each project. What is more useful is that we can also see the relevant items from other databases like invoices, meetings, and resources. For what is called a page section, we can also see more properties of the relevant item such as the amount, due date, and status of an invoice. With these relation properties, we can easily search through other databases and make a connection to this project page. As a prior setup to using this entire system, you can customize your client portal, which is a shared space to share documents and deliverables and communicate with your client. To customize this or any other page template, go in to edit the template and make any changes. What's left on this project page is the task view and meetings view. This allows you to easily manage what is relevant to this project. 
Next we have a task page. This is where we have the different layouts and views of our tasks. From today view, weekly view to monthly view. We have walked through the essentials part of the systems, let's keep diving into more of this comprehensive system. Firstly we have a portfolio page, this is a website you can host in Notion which is shareable with your potential clients and audience. You can showcase your skills and completed projects, as well as a lead capture form. I use Tally Forms which auto-exports any newly collected inputs into my client database. Following that, we have a services page. This is more for if you're a freelancer who offer different kinds of services, and by being able to group your projects and clients under the respective service just makes it clearer and organized. Next we have an invoices page. Each invoice can be assigned to each respective client and project. This allow you to keep track of any upcoming or due payments. Inside each invoice page, we have an invoice template which allows you fill in the relevant details and keep a copy of what is paid for in Notion. You would still need to create a payment link in Stripe or PayPal to collect the payment from your client. Next up we have Resources page. Resources is where you manage anything that could help with your current or future projects. This could be guidelines, checklists, references, or templates. There is also a folder database which allows you to group relevant resources under a single page. And before we dive into the finance part of this freelance system, we have a goals page to keep track of our quarterly objectives and key results. By tracking and visualizing our accomplishment and progress, this can be a key driver for growing our freelance business. To start off with using Notion for our finances, we first go into the accounts page. This is where we can add the different accounts we have and our current balance. On the same page, we also have an account transfer database which allows you to move your money between accounts. Inside each account, you can see the relevant expenses, incomes, and transfers. You can create a separate monthly report for each month. To do so, click on New Month, and inside the newly generated page filter each view for that specific month. Now we can see all the expenses, incomes, and transfers that happened in that month. Next we have the Incomes page. We have Recent Income view, a board view of monthly incomes, and lastly a full history of our past incomes. The Recent view allows you to quickly see and add any new incomes, while the Monthly view gives an overview of your earnings across the months. For the Expenses page, we have a similar setup, a Recent view, Monthly view, and Full History view of our expenses. Finally, there is a page for subscriptions. Although subscriptions do not automatically log into expenses, having this table allows us to keep track of our active paying subscriptions and our monthly and yearly expenses on the various services. And that's it for this Notion walkthrough. I believe having a single tool like this can supercharge our everyday workflow and productivity. If you haven't already, you can grab this template down below. Otherwise, let's all keep leveling up our work in life with Notion.